Hey, hey, hey. I hope that you all are having a blessed day. I missed you guys. So happy to see you all. Um, well, to be speaking to you all. I can't see y'all. Sorry. <laughs> so um, the first thing that came to me, um, I was uh, in the word today and the Lord had led me to Exodus chapter five and six. And this word is really, really speaking to a lot of things that a lot of us is going through today. So I just pray that it reaches whoever it needs to reach and i pray that it changes your mindset on today in my name of jesus i pray amen all right so lately it's been like you know there's a lot of talk about what god is going to do but nothing is being done you know um that's how a lot of us feel today just like when god sent moses and aaron to israel they were sent to give hope unto the people and to warn Pharaoh of what was to come if he did not turn from his wicked ways and allow Israel to do what God wanted them to do in that time. The Pharaoh symbolizes a lot of strongholds and problems we face today. Things that just won't let us go, no matter how much we pray or try to figure out new ways to bring upon the change. Sometimes God's way of helping doesn't always make sense. Sometimes it looks like things are getting worse before it gets better. It almost pushes people into not wanting God's help at all because nothing is happening anyway that they can see. Israel had gotten to the point where even they despised Moses and Aaron for even going before Pharaoh to begin with. This caused Moses to question God on why he had sent him there, you know, um, if it was only going to lead Israel into more pain, sorrow, and heavier burdens. Moses and Israel had to learn that all words spoken from the mouth of God is not in vain. His word does not return to him void. You know, the Lord was putting in my spirit. And the revelation I got towards this relates to the church on the, ver you know, when I was just saying that God's, Moses and Israel had to learn, you know, that God's word doesn't return to him void and it's not in vain. Um, a lot of leaders today, preachers, teachers, you know, um, people go into these churches and even online, they go and they listen, you know, um, to these people talk and preach the word. But the sad part is, is that most leaders and preachers and teachers who are supposed to believe in the very word they speak, they don't believe. And so what does the word tell us? It tells us that Satan can cause, cannot cast out Satan. So if a leader, a preacher, a teacher is trying to change somebody and, you know, mindset into having faith where they struggle in that, you know, a lot of these people wonder why people go on change and it's because the very people that they are listening to, they don't believe. So how can you talk somebody else into having faith, changing somebody else's mindset to believe in the word of God when you yourself are preaching and teaching and you don't believe? Again, Satan can't cast out Satan there. You know, it goes deeper than just that saying because it goes for everything. You know, when you begin to preach and you begin to teach the word of God, you could feel that anointing flowing. That is just something that you cannot fake. You know, you know that this person has been through some trials and tribulations. You can feel that God has brought them out and rescued them from certain situations that they might have caused upon themselves. You know, the kind of things that people uh, overcome that God's mighty hand brings them out. You know, when that person been through, you just, again, you can't fake it. It's real, you know? Um, and so a lot of people wonder why their church goes unchanged. And the reason why a lot of these leaders and preachers and teachers, you know, they don't care about the people going unchanged because as long as they bills getting met, the collection plate going around, the church bills getting paid, that's all they care about. They don't care about the soul. They don't care, you know, that this person thinking about going home, committing suicide. You know, these kind of things don't matter to them because what they what they need themselves, their needs are being met. Forget about the people. I hate to say it like that, but you know, a lot of these places, they do that. And that is so sad. That's why I don't charge anything. 
you know, um, when it comes to preaching and teaching the word, me or my husband, we don't play that because God's word is free. It's free. And I know y'all who've been with me for a long time, y'all know. Y'all know how I am. I'm charge y'all. God's word is free. Um, and so to continue on, you know, we were just speaking on God's word, not returning to him. Boy, it was so crazy because Moses had to learn the same lesson that Israel did. He didn't even have faith in what God sent him there to do and what God sent him there to speak. You know? It makes you just scratch your head. Like he had to see God's mighty work for himself as well. You know, a lot of us are, are in that same place today. Well, like, if we don't see, it's not real, you know? I don't know who needs to hear this, God, that began to lay on my heart. But the problems you are going through are about to end. The strongholds, the generational curses, the debt. Um, He began to tell me that this you shall see no more. That's why the fight is so strong. You know, he was telling me that it's, it's no different than Israel coming out of Egypt. The bondages, the, the bills piling up. All these things that are happening to you is because God is getting ready to pull you out of this thing. And when he do it, you're not going to see it anymore. You're not going to go back. The only thing he requires is the commandments that he speaks to you wherever he leads you. Even if it's through the word of God, follow every step, everything that he tells you to do when he brings you out. And he promises that you shall see this no more. But you've got to honor him. You've got to continue to stay in him. Don't be led astray. Stay on the right path and watch God continue to open up things for you. No lie. So he began to tell me it's no different for us today uh, when he brought Israel up out of Egypt. Told me the enemy tried everything they could to keep Israel bound and in slavery. When God came through for Israel, he left no table unturned. He made it to where the Pharaoh and his minions would never bother Israel no more. Now, when God brings us out of something, sometimes things still don't make sense. Most of the time it's because God disciplines us in the same way he did Israel. Just like while Israel was in the wilderness, Israel thought it would have been better. They said this from their mouths. It would have been better if they had never came out of Egypt. They felt like God led them out to starve and die in the wilderness. The same mindset Israel had then, many of us have today. We want to return to what feels comfortable, what felt comfortable to us because we already knew what to expect. Most of us today are living in survival skills. We have taught ourselves how to survive from week to week. Most of us live from paycheck to paycheck. And here God is calling us to greater. But when he calls us forth, we have to be willing to allow God to discipline us because after all, if God tells us that he doesn't want us to return to certain things, how can we keep from turning to those things if there's no discipline? Because if you don't receive discipline from God and allow God to educate you on the things that put you in that situation to begin with and to teach you strategies of how not to return to that, how can you truly, truly not return to familiarity? You know, that's why it's so important to put that time in with God and to allow him to teach you, mold you, shape you in the way that he sees fit. I mean, living a true life that is really, you know, loving and truthful unto God, you know, turning away from wickedness 
and returning to it no more. It's so important. It's so important. It's so important not to return to those ways. Sometimes it could seem hard. The paths God causes us to take is not always easy. But if you continue on, I promise it does get better. A lot of us things don't work out, you know, how we expect it to is because we don't have faith. I've been in certain situations where I know I ain't had the money. Even today, I'm just keeping it real. I've been in situations where I know I did not have the money. If it was not for my faith in God, I wouldn't have made it. And every time, every time God met that need. Sometimes there are certain doors. Sometimes... Uh, when I say certain doors, you know, we may ask God for something and then sit there and wait for God to pour it on our laps. All the time, it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you have to actually get up and knock on doors. Some of them doors might shut in your face. But the, the goal is that you continue on. Because remember, a person that continues on until God opens up and makes a way for that person... That person, God will not deny because you have faith. You believe, you know, that God is making a way. Don't do that. Jello, you see me on here. You should have opened that before you came in here, sir. My bad. Y'all hear that paper rattling over here? Nobody but my husband. <laughs> but seriously. You know, when you have faith and you are determined, can't nothing stop you. <clears throat> but you have to believe, believe, believe that that which you are asking God for can be done. If you don't believe, don't knock on that door because it ain't going to happen. All right, you all. So that's everything that uh, God has given me today. My birthday is tomorrow. Yippee. <laughs> Baby, you had anything you want to say? You eating jello. No. The word of God say, I just got the last part. Hi. <laughs> the word of God say that faith without work is dead. And I think that that plays a big part with faith, you know, and uh, Paul also was telling the Hebrews in 11 chapter 1, faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I could elaborate with what she was saying is, you know, saying many times that we don't have money and God will still make a way, you know, that he will still meet our needs, you know, know that a lot of people like to tell know what they have know that know that you know I mean like what they went through and no no but they don't tell you know that when you know that when you're going through things because right now things is hard right now. Mm -hmm. Things are very hard, you no know, very difficult, you know. And it gonna take us really Believing in God, trusting in God, in His Word. And that's all I want to say, but mm -hmm. again, tomorrow is my is my sweetie pie birthday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all. Till next time. We love you guys and happy to be back. See y'all.